silky, decadent, heavenly. Those are just some of the words we at Horton Chocolatiers use to distract you from the fact our products share the same color and consistency of human feces. Oh, no, no, no. Keep looking at the pretty ladies slobbering all over that dung-colored calorie bomb so you can subconsciously associate chocolate with femininity. A perfect pairing. Just like chocolate and menstruation. What? That's right. You're feeling the universal monthly candy craving experienced by every woman. Except for women in basically every country except America. We're the only ones whose chocolate ads literally hypnotize women into thirsting for cookie monster scat when they're stressed out and or bleeding from their bits. Non-American women report far fewer chocolate cravings during their time of the month. Speaking of that time of the month, if you're feeling a little too period-y, we could always take away your chocolate and replace you with our anthropomorphic candy mascot. Unlike our competitors, we've kept her sexy as hell. Hi, I'm Roger, and I want to tell you about Horton Chocolatier's coagulated sugary bean goop. We use only the finest cocoa beans, handpicked by farmers whom we are proud to no longer be legally required to call slaves because they're technically paid now. Sure, it's only about $300 per year in an industry worth hundreds of billions annually. And also, yeah, we still use actual slavery on cocoa plantations sometimes. But the courts decided that that is technically not our problem. And besides, all those child slaves we used are all grown up, so they're very literally no longer child slaves. Just don't think too hard about how the fudge is made, especially the part where the, in most cases, not literal slave farmers, ferment those little brown testicles in the cocoa pods, natural sticky white goo. The tree jizz covered seeds are then toweled off, roasted, and liquefied so they can be made into the curdled nut butter ooze intimacy substitute. By the way, have you heard the good news? Chocolate really is healthy for you. At least according to this report from the scientists over at Horton's Smart Place for Science and Good Brain Things, which our chocolate company owns. What you won't find in those reports is just how addictive chocolate can be, thanks to all the sugar and caffeine. We don't have to mention it because it's not physically addictive. You know what else isn't technically physically addictive? Cocaine. Oh, no, thank you. Fairly compensated, probably adult employee. Does our solidified legume puree sound off-putting to you? Do you also taste the butyric acid found in most American chocolate and also human vomit that for some reason isn't in foreign chocolate? Well then, let me put your mind and stomach at ease. Chances are the gunk you're getting from the store isn't even real chocolate at all. Sometimes our supply of probably not slave picked beans dries up and we're forced to use alternates like vegetable oil. Other times, we just kind of want to see what foul sh we can feed you without anybody noticing. Technically, we'll have to label our fool's chocolate with some vague term like uh, chocolatey substance or chocolate flavored. But as long as it's offered by a vampire or a coked out bird, your kids will threaten to burn down a forest unless you buy them a couple dozen boxes of our essence of chocolate sawdust. Speaking of, if you do buy a full carton of Tasty Pyrite, at least you're not contributing to the complete deforestation of the Ivory Coast, which has lost about 85% of its forests since 1960, due in no small part to cocoa tree cultivation. Today, a lot of it is done illegally in national parks where cocoa criminals are cuckoo for burning down thousand year old trees and erecting illegal cocoa plantations that are mostly not for mostly adult slaves. At least that tasty sludge is authentically still terrible for your health. <laughs> I'm Roger, by the way. Yeah, still good. Yeah.